guys, I need a bigger printer. And I found one with the Elegoo, I believe that's how you say it, Elegoo, Elegoo Neptune 4. So I'm going to open this thing up, go through it, look into it. You see all the paperwork, the parts, the pieces, all that stuff goes together. I mean, the frame comes out, the printer head, everything is in here. And you know what? At this point, it's time to start putting it together. Let's get to the table. 320 by 320. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge bed right there. So, and I kind of need it for what I have planned. Some of the parameters of the machine, you can see it right here, the different speeds, all this stuff. I like that it uses Cura, because, well, you know, Cura is something I've been messing around with a lot. You can look at all of this right here, but um, I think it's time to get it put together. It does have Wi-Fi and all that, so yeah, let's get this put together. Part one is to put the printer head on, and it goes right up into here, and it uses these bolts right here, as you can see, and everything is nicely labeled. This was actually really nice. Why? Because you can get to all three of the bolts that hold the head on. And don't forget this bolt here and this one here, which holds the plastic cover on. Up next, we get to put all this on the actual printer bed. To get this done, I laid the machine over here, um, which is the opposite side of where the wires are. Now, it does come with tools to put this all together. You got the bolts here and here. And make sure that you got those pulled down tight because you really don't want this right here to move. This has got to stay rigid. I want to show you guys something. See this little switch right here? Down inside of here. This says 230. You're going to want to flip this switch to 115 if you're, normal, if you're using normal power outlets. It has to look like this. Up next was this little bracket right here. It's just three bolts. Super simple. Super easy. And that magnetically holds this, which has a little label, which tells you about that switch. And that panel plugs into right here, which is actually pretty nice because you can take this off and do your work and put it back on. I like that feature. And now we have wire connections to make. Now, don't worry about these. Each one of these plugs is different, so you can't mess it up. And there you have it here and one over here. Okay, so I'm putting all this together. Okay, so as I'm putting all this together, you can see the uh, little dude right here, which will tell you whether you run out of uh, filament or not. This right here was a little bit on the odd. I'd rather have this be a little bit different here, a little bit more, where I didn't have to fold it to go in. And the instructions say to fold it, but I'd rather not have to fold it. But I may actually print something up and replace this. But this right here is all set up. Now there's a piece that goes into here where this wire goes. But overall, it's going together pretty well. It's just this was a little bit odd for me for some reason. What this is is a big time set of fans. And they blow out the front right underneath, but this way. Without a doubt, this is the largest machine that I've got. I mean, that thing is, uh, that's a large bed. Now, uh, there are braces on the back side of this. They come up to here to the top and help support all of this so it doesn't, there's no wobble. You don't want any wobble on this. So um, all your stuff is here. I mean, that bolts in everything beautifully. The washers go underneath there. Well, guys, at this point, it's time to turn this thing on, go through the menu, and check all that stuff out. Ooh, look at that. Nice. All right, everything is starting up. Okay, let's go through some of this menu here. This display is really nice, really good uh, sensitivity. Like some of them, you gotta push on it quite a bit so you can move everything around right here. Temperature, look at all that. The extruder. Okay, this touchpad is really nice. This is the best touchpad I've, I've ever messed with on one of these. Settings, look at this. We got language, WLAN, light control. Ooh, that turns everything on and off right there. Observable observation light. I can get my finger on it. There we go. Oh, that is cool. Let's see if I can show you. Check this out. That is neat. All right, now we got fan control. Ooh. 
motor off. Not messing with that one. <laughs> Filament detector. We can turn this on or off apparently. So that's nice to see. Um, about machine. Neptune 4 Plus. Oh, what's advanced settings do? Backlight, key sound, power loss recovery. Okay. Speed mode. Ah, silent normal sport. I read about this. I'm just going to leave it in normal for now. Temperature settings, PLA, TPU. See, now, one of the things that I was uh, looking at with this is that it said it was good to go for uh, nylon right out of the box so I will be messing around with this for nylon a little bit later although I don't see it right here to a 560 so everything is pretty much preset here I also want to mess with PETG so having all these presets right here and close enough where I can simply adjust them nice and easy right here on the pad I like that really do so that's easy to see right there easy to get to everything now, uh, let's see, let's see what level is. Okay, let's level this thing up. All right, I guess we're just gonna let it do its thing. Oh yeah, Ooh. I'm sitting here waiting for it to do its thing and I'm like, oh wait a minute, I got to push automatic. Calibrate the bed, yes. There we go. One thing this printer has that my other printers don't have is it has these adjustment knobs on the bed. The other ones, they are rigid mounted, so they don't, they're not adjustable and all that. But say your print comes out perfect, but it has a lean to it, you can actually adjust the bed and recalibrate everything to straighten that up. And just for reference, this thing has 121 points for level. This is more than any other printer I have ever had. And it's going to do this all 121 times across the entire bed. And the leveling is complete. To save everything, you had to kind of like do a weird restart on it. But I guess we're good now. On the red flash drive, we have the user manual, software, model, Neptune 4 Plus assembly tutorial video, and the system volume information, along with the very first G-code. Okay, confirm. All right, guys, the very first print is underway. I tell you what, one of the things with a bigger bed here is, man, I, I got something on my mind. Can you picture a pro code for the Raminator Mega Tires? Will finally stop them things from falling over? That would be pretty interesting, wouldn't it? One of the things I like is that wheel right there is exposed. You can get to it easy with your thumb in case you happen to have an issue or you want to feed the new filament in and all that so that's a nice thing let's see if we can I mean we're like on the first layer right here I can't see a whole lot <laughs> lesson learned don't pull this out while it's printing I was kind of hoping maybe it had it in memory and all that but you've got to leave this in while you're printing so uh, that was a lesson learned it gave me a power loss for the Buddha so I just said let's continue let's see how it does I mean, we don't have a lot going here, but you can see a little bit. I went ahead and stopped the print because I wanted to look at this right here. This is the very first layer on this thing. Let me see if I can get a better shot of it. There we go. Very first layer on this machine. And that little dot is where I pulled the uh, USB out. It's moving right along. Look at the little Buddha. Beautiful. Pop up. It's still warm. Oh, there we go. Okay, check this out right here. Look at the overhang on the ear. Not, dude, that is, that's really good. I like that. A little bit of stringers on the tops right here, but wow, nice job. This is a G-code file that I've got from Cura. Um, this is all kinds of stuff here, and it looks like everything is on. Nice. Let me pick something out. If 
By using this right here, setting the temperature, pushing the load button, I was able to clear out the white for some red. I have chosen some Mias XT sliders. Let's see how these print. And if this prints good, this is awesome because I have all these files that are already ready in G-code. So let's hope for the best. Okay, we are done and uh, stuck beautifully. Now these are files that I had printed on other printers and that G code went right in. Beautiful. I do think I'll make some adjustments to it as far as like what the G code is and all that, but uh, wonderful. I can use all my old files, just go right in and get things done. I want to do some different TPU things like TPU inserts for crawlers and stuff like that. So I need that larger bed plus uh, like for the Dodge Challenger, the Primal Challenger, I want to make wheel wells and this has enough space to actually print all of that. So that's a big reason for me getting this printer, uh, just being able to do larger prints, you know, different things. But you know what? I gotta be honest with you, I like the fact, now it does have an Elugu version of Cura uh, which actually sets the build plate up to 320 by 320 and all of that for you. But yeah, using Cura means I get all these old files good to go. So that's really nice to see. Um, looking forward to building more stuff with it. So yeah, it's a great addition to my kind of limited collection of printers. So anyway, guys, check that description. I'll link it up down below. Use those links, hit that subscribe, ring that bell, and you guys have a wonderful day. If you're still watching, you are top shelf. You are the cream of the crop, the pick of the litter. You are phenomenal. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. Now, down below, there are links for the products you see. Also, for channel memberships, if you guys want to be a part. Channel members get early viewing on pretty much everything that I can. So, guys, check that description. There's a lot of info down there. Thank you all for watching.